good morning. It's day three. It's about seven o'clock this morning. In about 50 degrees. So it's nice and brisk morning. I'm just walking down to get my bear bag and have some morning coffee with you guys and tell you how the night went and what our plans are for today. So last night went a little differently as planned. We went to sleep about 7 o'clock last night. We uh, went in the tent at about 6. We were just done. We were tired. But we decided um, about 7 o'clock last night is when we finally passed out. At about 11 o'clock last night, I wake up to a loud whoosh. I thought, what in the world is that? Because I was in, like, dreamland. And then all of a sudden, I got really cold. And I was like, damn, what's that? Pause for a second. I forgot the stove for my coffee. And we're back with the stove. Pretty tired, I guess. I forgot that I needed the stove to make my coffee. So anyways, back to the storytelling. 11 o'clock last night, after we had been asleep for about four hours, I woke up to this whoosh sound. And I was like, what in the world is that? Couldn't figure out what it was. You know, when you're in that daze and you kind of can't really realize like what's happening. Well, then I got really cold and now I'm all kinds of confused. And I lay there for a few minutes and then I realized my pad just completely deflated. <sighs> so anyways, long story short, my pad deflated. There's a pretty big hole in it. And I slept the rest of the night on the very cold floor. Which, by the way, if you've never actually slept on the floor, I guess it probably got down to... 50, maybe 48 last night. I don't know. That's what it was supposed to be. If you've never really recognized how important the R value is in your pad that keeps you warm, well, try sleeping on the ground because it's cold. So off to REI when we get back to get a new pad. And that's that. That happens sometimes. That's just... Mm -hmm. That's just how the cookie crumbles some days. But we're up this morning and we're ready. Our plans are today, well, after coffee, our plans are today to walk back to Hogpen Gap. So now we have been going northbound. We're going to head back Sobo to Hogpen Gap. And we're going to have a friend or a trail angel pick us up. Because what we realized again is what we talked about yesterday is lack of water. And because there's so much lack of water, it's just not safe. Simply just not safe to try to do all those miles with it getting up to mid 70s, which is nice hiking weather, but you need water. And safety is always first. So we're gonna be safe, be wise, be smart. And we're going to get a shuttle, which is really our friend, Miss Brenda. So thank you, Miss Brenda. If you watch this video, we love you and we're so thankful for you. She's going to pick us up at Hogsman Gap, which I think is about five, five and a half miles from here later on today. And she's going to take us back to our car at Blood Mountain Cabin. And then we're going to figure out what to do from there. We may just find a place to camp close uh, to where our car is. You know, the AT is literally right there, so we may just find a place to camp right there. And I think there was a couple of campsites within a couple of miles, or even a mile, right, from where we parked. So we may do that. We may stay at the cabin. We may go back to Vogel State Park and camp there and have some fun with their amenities tomorrow. 
I don't know. And the whole thing is, is we don't have to decide until we feel like it. So we'll get coffee in, get packed up, and then we'll figure out, we'll walk back to Hopkins Gap. And then we'll figure out what we want to do for the rest of the day once we're trying to pick us up. And we'll catch back up with you guys as soon as we get back on trail. Bye. So reviewing the video, I kind of realized I didn't do the best job at really explaining the predicament that we found ourselves in. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do right now. Okay, so the plan was to go from Neil Gap to Low Gap Shelter and then from Low Gap Shelter back to Neil Gap. So an out and back. Again, the goal being just to test our gear, not to cover a bunch of miles um, and just to do the last shakedown hike. Well, it turns out from Neil Gap to Low Gap Shelter, there were zero water sources. The only water source we found was about eight miles in, you know, starting from Neil Gap. And that was down the 1.2 mile Blue Blaze trail from Whitley Gap Shelter. Um, that was a tough go, but we had to do it because, of course, we needed water. So as we were sitting here today, we were deciding, do we want to do that again? Is there any value to continue to go back the way we just came and then having to go back down that 1.2 mile blue blaze up and over that wildcat mountain to get water for the end of our section hike? So we basically just decided, no, it wasn't worth it. We got what we came for. It was wonderful that we were able to have the opportunity to test out our tent, to test out a couple other pieces of equipment that we were thinking about. And then also as a sort of impromptu thing we didn't plan for, we had to figure out water and learn how to resource manage, learn how to figure out you know when it was time for us to either get off trail or if we wanted to do a big water carry which of course we could have done a big water carry i did have an additional two liter knock bag that we could have filled up but again our goal was to test out you know the equipment and the gear that we had as our last shakedown and preparation for our through hike and we got that done by this time so we just decided hey we're done uh, we don't really need to test out any more gear and we can go ahead and hike back to Hog Pen Gap, which from where we were at this shelter was about, I think it was five or six miles and have a friend pick us up and spend the rest of the time that we had planned uh, just camping. And then of course we had the cabin at Blood Mountain Cabins Reserve. So I hope I made sense, you guys. If I didn't, please comment below and I will do my best to um, just make it make more sense. But long story short, we feel this was a great, great uh, productive shakedown hike where we were able to test our gear, decide which gear we wanted to take with us, and do on the fly resource management, which is not something we've had to do a whole lot of before. And so now Baby Bear and I feel super confident that we've got this. We are confident in our abilities of how to manage resources and the gear that we have, we are super excited about. In the end, we will do a final um, kind of synopsis of what we've decided to take and all of that. So stay tuned for that video, but just wanted to try to explain this a little bit better than I think I did when we were out on trail. All right, day three, we are gearing up and ready to go on our way to Hog Pen Gap. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, let's move. Everybody look at the tent site, make sure we didn't leave anything. 
Clear. Clear. All right. <clears throat> Off we go. Luckily, this shelter site is not 1.2 miles off the trail. It's only 0.1. So it's a pretty quick and easy jump back up into white blazes. Also clear. That was not ours. Clear. Yeah, hopefully somebody will come back and get their water bag filter that they left. We're just chugging along back to Hogpen Gap. Not a whole lot of sights to see. This is pretty much what the whole trail looks like from here. Lots of puds or pointless ups and downs. Not much in the way of views though. But it is beautiful and it's cool and it's a really nice day. So we are enjoying it. As we trek back, I think we have about another two miles or so to Hogpen Gap. And then we'll get picked up by our trail angel, Brenda. And then we'll head back to Vogel State Park and have a nice one more night of camping. <sighs> and then head over to Blood Mountain Cabins after on Friday and stay there for a couple nights. So yep, this is pretty much it for the next two miles. Currently we're going uphill, but a downhill is coming soon. Hey up there. <laughs> So we make it down to Hogpen Gap while we wait on our trail angel, Brenda. We meet some very nice people that even offer us some wonderful trail magic. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Not choke me. Sorry. <laughs> hey guys. So it is the end of day three. Oh, let me talk. Okay, ready? About 20 Three, seconds. Two, two, one. Hey guys! Hi! So it is the end of day three, which is also the conclusion of our very last shakedown hike, right? So that's super exciting because it means that this was a last attempt at dialing all of our gear in, making sure everything is where we want it to be, and I think that we're almost quite there. We got a lot of answers today that we wanted, um, or over this past three days that we wanted and we're really excited and feel very ready. I feel ready. You yep, feel ready? I feel ready. Yep. yep. Okay. So we'll probably circle back and do another video of maybe some of the updates or the changes that we've decided upon um, based on our last section hike. So we're here at Vogel State Park. Um, if you can tell, we're kind of trying to find a spot that's a little bit quiet, <laughs> but also has some light because it's dark now. Um, but we just wanted to kind of wrap up and basically say thanks for following us along. Um, yeah. We had, what, three days? two, yeah. Three days, two nights of our section hike. We ended it early. We were supposed to be on trail again um, one more night tonight and then on trail again tomorrow and then ending tomorrow midday. But because the water situation was pretty crucial here, um, all of tomorrow, all of our miles for tomorrow, there were no water sources that were available and we just didn't feel safe with that. We could have tried to do a huge water carry, but it was for Jael, for myself, for my husband, and for then Kira. Yeah. Definitely also Kira. our dog. Yeah, also our dog, which, you know, she's she's just an important family member too. So we didn't feel safe and so no big deal. We luckily have a very good friend, um, Miss Brenda, who we mm -hmm. called and she came to our rescue and she picked us up and we are also very grateful. 
and she drove us back to pick up our car and so we're gonna stay here one night and then tomorrow is when our cabin reservations start and so we will kind of hang out here tonight um, it's already 8.03 which for us is past hiker midnight we're pretty tired yeah um, so we're gonna finish this video get to bed I think we're going to kind of hang out around here tomorrow there's a couple of short little trails a waterfall there's a lake we might rent a little yeah. boat and do a little paddle boating tomorrow just yeah. having some fun and then we will head over to one of our favorite restaurants either tomorrow or maybe Saturday which is a hole in the wall so shout out to them their food is ah, so delicious delicious so good so yeah that's what we're gonna do and then Friday afternoon we check into the cabin for several days to just rest relax have some fun maybe even try to find some I don't know if they have any festivals this weekend here in Blairsville or you know something fun yeah. to go visit a farm and I don't know do some picking of some sort of whatever happens to be growing right yeah. now. Alright guys, thanks again for following so long. We're super excited. March is getting closer and closer by the minute. Yeah. Um, we're not going to announce our exact date, but we will say it's going to be mid to late March. Yeah. Um, so we will do another video to talk about our gear, but for now, thank you for following us along. Thank you so much for subscribing to our channel yeah. and for all of your support and encouragement. We are overwhelmed with gratitude for how um, just wonderful you guys are being to us. So yeah. that's it. That's a wrap, kiddo. Are you yeah. done? You ready? Yeah. All right. High five. Bye, guys. Hi. <laughs> oh, that'd be terrible. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Turn that off. We don't need that at all. I'm wasting the battery. It is already starting. Why don't it stop? I don't know.